I begin with a poem from the Iona community. No wind at the window, no lock on the door, no light from the lampstand, no foot on the floor, no dream born of tiredness, no ghost raised by fear, just an angel and a woman and a voice in her ear. Oh Mary, oh Mary, don't hide from my face. Be glad that you're favored and filled with God's grace. The time for redeeming the world has begun and you are requested to mother God's son. This child must be born that the kingdom may come. Salvation for many, destruction for some. Both end and beginning, both message and sign, both victor and victim, the world has begun. And you are requested to mother God's son. This child must be born that the kingdom may come. Salvation for many, destruction for some. Both end and beginning, both message and sign, both victor and victim, both yours and divine. No payment was promised, no promises made. No wedding was dated, no blueprint displayed. Yet Mary's consenting to what none could guess, replied with conviction, tell God I said yes. This indeed is Mary Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays in the year. The fourth Sunday of Advent is usually set aside as Mary Sunday, one out of three of the years we read the story about Joseph, but two out of three we talk about Mary. Mary is our namesake. We are the only Episcopal um, church in the Diocese of Olympia with the name of St. Mary's. You will occasionally hear about a St. Mary's Episcopal Church, although most of them are Roman Catholic. Um, but nevertheless, she has a very important part to play in the story. And many people have grown up with a real sense of connection to her. It grew on me, I have to say that. I did, was not raised Roman Catholic, and so I didn't have that devotion but yet, more and more as time went on, she began to feel like the feminine face to God to me. And many other people have talked about that with me through the years. She's seen as compassionate and yet strong. She represents an unconditional love that I think for all of us is easier for us to receive because we're used to our mothers loving us unconditionally. She's the one that tends to, the one that cares, the one that forgives, the one that is present when we need her to be present. Mary is not only known for her, for showing up and being willing to take on things that are rather unexpected, but she was trusting. She trusted a great deal. Mary's yes, which is what it was, is very important because it really enables our yes as well. Now, these yeses, the yeses that we say that we engage in or choose to take part in are not just a one-time yes. We're not just saying one time to God, yes, whatever it is, I am signing on. Those yeses, sometimes come in the form of crazy ideas. After all, Mary was 14 and Joseph was much older and they were not married and they were in many ways immigrants and poor and homeless. And yet she trusted enough to be willing to buy in to God's crazy idea. This yes is also a yes that is renewable. On many occasions, she had to step up in one way or another. And so she said yes again and again and again. In my experience, that's what the journey of faith is about. It's not a one-time yes. It is a many-time yes. And it's a willingness 
to step out and to step up. Even during difficult times, Mary was at the foot of the cross when Jesus died, and it is a time that was indeed painful, as it would be painful for any of us. And yet a lot of times it is in the midst of pain that we can find our direction by being willing to say yes to God, even though we may not know what direction God is taking us. Now, Mary, as I said, was not known for her, her heroic acts, but what she was known for was this trust, this willingness, this openness. Now, she didn't say yes immediately. She thought about it for a moment and pondered it in her heart. That's important. We always get to have a say in whether we participate in God's work or not. It is never forced, but always invited. So it is a question that we need to answer on a regular basis. Mary is the yes that acknowledges Jesus' presence in the world. And Jesus is the God who is about doing in the world. Mary shows us how to receive what God is doing and hand it on to others. My question to you and to myself this year is what will our yes look like this year? What is it that's being asked of us? You know, many other Christmases, we would be out doing various things. We would be gathering with family and friends. And for most of us, we are choosing to stay home. We're saying yes, not only to out of a sense of protection for ourselves, but really out of love for our loved ones and our community. I think it's uncertain as to what this yes is involves. Yes, it involves staying in for the moment, but I have a sense that there is a lot that is gestating at the moment, and we'll see what the world looks like when we re-emerge. Not only re-emerge as people, but re-emerge as Christians. What does it mean to be in the world? How is it that we, that what will church look like? What will our lives look like when we can gather, but yet not completely in the same way that we did before? How is it that we are gonna be present for our neighbors? How is it that we are going to communicate on a deeper level? This time for me has been a time of great reflection and I hope it has been for you as well. Even during those anxious times, what you can know is that God is trustworthy and that it may not be clear, it may feel like fog that we're walking through at the moment, but God is still there and still worthy of our trust. So our yes, right now involves saying no. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? And yet this yes, my sense is, will be a far greater yes than we can ask or imagine at this point in time. During this time, I have been doing a lot of exploring, um, reading a lot, praying a lot, um, exploring things on my iPad, which is the new form of a book for me. And one of the things that I came across was a prayer um, dedicated to Mary. Now this is an ancient form of prayer, which is, it is known as a body prayer, which means that there are gestures that go with it. Um, it's almost a form of yoga. You, there, is a, there is Christian yoga, I don't know if you've ever um, heard of that, um, but it is a way of not only saying our words, but feeling it in our body and doing various gestures that go with the words. In this particular prayer, there are four gestures, and I think all four of them speak to what this journey in Mary is all about. The first gesture is that of awaiting. Awaiting. What are we awaiting? What is it 
that will land in our hands. You know, the time, this is, pregnancy obviously takes nine months. And so Mary, during this time, had been told she would give birth to the child of God, to the Son of God. But what was that experience like? What are we awaiting in our lives? What is it that we are looking forward to? What is it that will fill us in the future? The first gesture is awaiting. A second is allowing. It is the notion, this is actually an ancient prayer stand uh, called the Aran's position, but it is opening to allow God to appear and to come through us physically into our bodies. Are we willing to allow God to love us at the depth of our being unconditionally? Are we willing to say yes to God in whatever form it happens to come? Are we willing to allow God to use us to give birth to the Christ child in whatever form that comes? So we await, we allow, we accept, we say yes. We accept God's love at the depth of who we are. All of those dark corners, all of those places that we would rather hide, it is right there that God will come anew. Will we accept his presence? And the last gesture is that of attending. This love that is given to us is meant to be shared with the world. We're asked to attend to the world around us, to take care, to be compassionate, to be forgiving, to, and to reach out and touch, literally, those in need of God's love. So we await the coming of the new. We allow God's love to come through us. We accept his call and we attend to the world. This is a form of prayer or a prayer that I invite you to do if you are so able. Um, I usually do it three times a day. And if you're a little embarrassed about doing gestures in front of somebody, you can do it in the shower. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Um, but the notion is that for me, it makes a difference to feel it in my body. Um, it really reminds me that faith is not a head trip, but it is something that really needs to be lived and embodied. Have a good Christmas, my friends. Um, I will see you actually tonight at Lessons and Carols. Um, be safe and know that God is coming. Amen.